Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, another GCSE uh, live, guys. Okay, so guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to actually what will be my final uh, GCSE um, TikTok live for 2025. Um, and today I'll be going over English language paper one, guys. Okay, now, guys, um, before I get into it, this Sunday, uh, from 5 till 6 p.m., I will be running my final GCSE language paper one masterclass going over this paper. This is the 2024 paper, which um, I've actually been looking at and going through with my class over the last three weeks. OK, so a bunch of students who've been part of my classes are doing their mock exams this month, as well as December and January. And so these uh, master classes have been really useful for them because I've been going over basically what is the only locked paper one exam um, that's not publicly available. And um, some students who've actually already had the mocks have literally emailed me and been like, oh my God, miss, thank you so much for sharing this paper. This is literally what came up in my mocks. Um, I've been getting a bunch of emails like that. And I've also been getting also a lot of messages from my resit guys, okay? So I know that the last uh, English language resits was this Thursday, so literally uh, yesterday. And so I've been getting a lot of um, responses and emails from students who uh, did the resits this year. And they literally found these masterclasses super helpful. Um, so guys, for those of you that are preparing for your mocks either this month next month but i also know um there's going to be major mocks that take place in january literally after christmas time this is likely going to be the paper that is going to be used by your school of course for those of you i also know that there's way more um students who also just simply want to know how to do well on these papers okay it's kind of crazy because i thought about um how long we have to the actual 2025 gcses we live to have november december and then five months and then may that's when these 2025 GCSE language paper one exams kick off. Okay. So I do have quite a number of students who are part of my master classes who are like, I literally want to hit the ground running from May. I don't want to wake up in March, April. And so guys, obviously for those of you that really want to be able to feel confident, hit the ground running, especially if you're doing your mocks this month, possibly next month, not many schools do mocks in December. Usually it's either November or or January, okay? I'll be going over these locked papers. And more specifically, guys, the that masterclass this Sunday is going to be my final language paper one masterclass where I'm going over question number five, the image. And the image that came up for these exams were re was really weird. I'm not going to lie, okay? And a lot of students who um, are part of my masterclass, they voted. So I sent out a vote and I was like, guys, do you want me to go for the story descriptive writing? And the descriptive writing was the one that most people voted for because they were like, that image is horrible. I don't know what I would write if I went for descriptive writing. So I'm going to be going over that because I know that that's something that's really popular with students, okay? And then the following week, so the following Sunday after this Sunday, we'll go over question number five, creative and descriptive writing. The following Sunday, I'm going to be going over language paper two. Again, I know that a bunch of students are going to be doing the mocks this month and in January going over this locked paper. OK, so, of course, for those of you that want to do well in your paper two exams, but also to be honest, if you just want to be hitting the ground running from Christmas time, because Christmas really, you're then going to have basically five months before your actual exams. OK, so obviously for those of you in year 11, you need to be really um, locking in. OK, so your holidays are going to get fewer and fewer and you want to be using your time next month to lock in and really, really get that revision going. So, of course, for those of you that want those tools, also to see actual past paper questions answered and model responses, which I'll send to all my masterclass students, obviously join in, be part of this paper too. That's going to be in uh, two Sundays time. I'm going to be doing my final language paper one masterclass this Sunday, going over question number five, descriptive writing. And then the following Sunday, I'm going to be going over the language paper two exams and what students had to sit in the summer 2024 exams. OK, this is especially useful for year 11s. So this is class of 2025. It's crazy because it sounds it, exams in the summer feel so far away. Right. Like literally um, it kind of became dark today at 4 p.m. Right. So it feels like probably like a whole world away. But literally, guys, especially for those of you that are doing your GCSE exams next year, 
You will be so shocked at the fact that come December, you've got six months left to your exams. Then January, you've literally got five months and it's the countdown to the final exam. Okay, don't get caught short. Do not be part of the 40% who failed the GCSEs this year and found themselves doing their resits this week. Guys, obviously, because the uh, 2024 exams are locked, um, because as I said, guys, like I already had a bunch of emails from um, some of my masterclass students who literally said, oh my gosh, thank you so much for going over this paper. Literally, it came up during my mocks and um, many more who are doing the mocks in January are obviously well versed in how to answer the four questions. This Sunday, we're going over question number five. These papers are locked, okay? So they can't be shared publicly on social media. However, obviously in my private classes, I'll be going over them in more detail. And more specifically, I'm going to be going over question number five. And most students in my masterclass class actually voted they wanted to go over descriptive writing they said okay i know that you love stories barbara but i find descriptive writing really challenging and our schools have primed us for that so one one what i want to do today in today's live is actually go over descriptive writing it's actually i'll be honest guys i always suggest to my students do the story but a lot of people um say that the teachers prefer to teach them and always insist on them doing the image question. So what I'm going to be doing in today's live is literally showing you guys how to model response based on this image. Okay, this is descriptive writing, how to approach descriptive writing and more specifically how to write an answer based on this image. Now, guys, just to be really clear when it comes to language paper one, okay? When it comes to language paper one, especially if you're doing your mocks this month, um, and maybe in January, okay? Because to be honest, not very many schools are doing December mocks. December isn't usually a very popular time for mock exams. It's usually either this month or in January. How should you manage your time when it comes to paper one? And as I said, guys, this is literally going to be my final TikTok of the year. Um, and in all honesty, guys, I've literally not had that much time to upload. Um, so probably this live is probably not going to be uploaded to YouTube. So obviously I'm going to try my best, but I would suggest like obviously screenshotting and stuff like that, because very likely, guys, if you miss this live, it's probably gone. OK, I'll see if I can get some time maybe this weekend to upload. But um, that's not a promise. I'm entirely sure I can keep. Okay. However, obviously guys, for those of you that actually want recorded lessons, okay. Cause I always record all of my master classes. And if you want to see how to answer the question five for the 2024 exam, this is the locked paper. And most of my students who are part of this masterclass overwhelmingly voted for the descriptive writing image. So I do know that descriptive writing and the picture is very, very popular. Obviously, join in on that masterclass. That's going to be my last language paper one class of 2024. The next time I go over language paper one is going to be next year. OK, and also, guys, to be honest, this is going to be my last live of 2024. OK, so let's get into it with this paper okay so guys just generally speaking when it comes to this paper as a whole okay i've been going over it in lots of detail and writing model answers for my master class okay i've always been telling my students especially my students who did my their resets this week but also my students who are doing mocks at some point this month as well as in january okay so i do know that some people are also doing it in december but majority of people are either doing it in november or january this is how you manage your time generally speaking when it comes to language paper one remember of the one hour 45 minutes you must begin the first 10 minutes reading the question paper and the insert do it in that order. Read the questions. Questions one, two, three, four, and five. Then read the insert looking for answers for questions one to four. Then question one, which is the four statements from the first paragraph that are true. Spend a max of five minutes on this question. Question two, which is a language question. How does the writer use language to describe blah, 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 blah. It's worth eight marks to spend 10 minutes on this question. Question three, which is a structure question. How does the writer structure the text to interest you as a reader? It's always the same in every single language paper one. It's always exactly the same. How does the writer structure the text to interest you as a reader you're supposed to talk about structure and you're always interested as a reader by the way guys remember that examiners do not at all care if you find the text boring as sin you were literally falling asleep and then somehow you woke yourself up because remember this is actually your exam examiners don't actually care you're always interested as a reader and for this question you spend a max of 10 minutes on this question this is an eight marker by the way guys one of the big things that emerged from the examiner report in 2024 okay this is the gcse exams that students sat in may and june this year okay and those that failed resat this week 
One of the big things that contributed to the 40% of students who failed the GCSEs, and again, guys, I'm not making up these statistics, literally Google, 40% GCSE 2024, read the Financial Times article, The Guardian, whatever. It's literally all over the internet. The examiner report said AO2 was one of the areas that was really weak. And that was something that I emphasized to my students when I was going over the language paper one exam with them in my private masterclass, okay? The 2024, we even looked at the mark scheme. I literally went through in granular detail. Guys, this is what came up in question two when it came to language. This is what came up in question number three. This is how model answer looks like. Now let's look at the mark scheme. Then we went over the mark scheme and then I described and discussed to my students, listen, if you're answering question two and question three, do not make the same error that 40% of GCSE students who were in your position last year, or even to be honest, this year, right? We say last year, it's last academic year. But in May and June, 40% of GCSE students failed the language paper one and paper two exams because they literally cannot distinguish language and structure. In question two, when you're asked to talk about language, they're talking about structure. In question three, they're talking, they're asked about structure, they're talking about language. They're just throwing in random techniques, crossing their fingers and hoping something's going to stick, right? And examiners clearly could see that. And equally, examiners could see that because students did not even understand these techniques, they weren't able to also appropriately analyze them, okay? So guys, as I said, I've literally been spending the last two Sundays with my students in my private masterclass going over Section A, questions one to four of this language paper one exam. And this Sunday, so this is not tomorrow, but the Sunday, but the Sunday this week, I'm going to be going over the descriptive writing. However, obviously for students who sign up late, they always get access to those recordings. Okay. Now, going back to timings. In addition to being able to manage your timings, 10 minutes reading the question paper and the insert, then five minutes on question one, 10 minutes on question two, uh, 10 minutes on question three, making sure you distinguish your AO2 and then analyze thoroughly. Do not say stuff like, it makes the reader want to read on, right? That's another thing that students do. And it's a cardinal sin, okay? It makes the reader want to read on. And they think, oh yeah, I, I'm literally analyzing when I say this. It makes the reader want to read on. That is not analysis, okay? Students think that, they say, oh, the writer has used this language technique. The writer has used this structure technique. It makes the reader want to read on. That's not analysis, okay? So you need to make sure you are avoiding that. And again, the best way to improve your language structure analysis and also just generally speaking, your section A analysis in language paper one is to look at examples of well-crafted essays, okay? And that's what I do in my masterclasses. I literally go over the model responses and then show and write the model answer and I even color code my peel paragraphs point evidence explanation link and in the explanation I literally pinpoint to my students look this is literally how you analyze you use this exact language use this exact sentence structure and use that now go off read my model responses and apply it into your essays especially for your mocks right now going back to question uh timings okay question number four which is a 20 mark question this by the way in terms of skill set is a mix of the skills that you're bringing into question two and three. The only difference with question four is it is evaluative. You're given a student statement. A student haven't read this text said, blah, 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 blah. To what extent do you agree? There's always two parts of the statement. You need to show some kind of evaluation by talking about the writer's methods. Now this is language and structure, but equally engaging with the student statement. Again, I went over this question with my students last Sunday. And we looked specifically at also how to agree, but also partially disagree with the student statement to make it even more evaluative. Now, as I said, guys, this Sunday, I literally asked my students, hey, vote. What do you want me to go over? Do you want me to go over the story during the lesson or descriptive writing? And then do you want, whichever I don't do, I'm going to send you a written model answer. By far, most of my students literally voted for descriptive writing. It seems to be overwhelmingly popular. And that's why I'm going to be talking about it in connection to this question. But of course, for those of you that want to get a model response for both parts of this paper, in addition to also asking me questions during the lesson, okay? Obviously with TikTok Live, I literally just pop up, do the live, and then I'm out, right? But for those of you that also have questions, right? You're like, actually, this is what I wrote. This is the feedback I got from Miss or Sir in school. I don't understand it. 
Why is my descriptive writing not getting anywhere closer to 20 marks? 25 marks, 30. How can I push my descriptive writing up to grade nine band, to grade eight, to grade seven? I then obviously answer that in addition to showing how to write a model response, okay? So of course, I'm going to be talking about that this Sunday. It's a private class because these less, these um, papers are locked, right? So of course, after that Sunday, I'm going to be going over language paper two, but I'm not going to be able to share them publicly on TikTok because they are locked papers. Most schools are going to be using them for the November, December, and January mocks. However, question five, which is what I'm going to be talking about and more specifically descriptive writing. You should spend a max of 50 minutes on this question that should be subdivided into 10 minutes planning your response. This is sacred. And then 40 minutes actually writing your response. Remember, of course, for this question, you are tested on AO5, which comprises of 60% of your mark of this 40 marker and AO6, which comprises of 40% of the 40 marks available for this question. What does AO5 mean? What does AO6 mean? AO5 is, are you using, are you communicating clearly, effectively? Are you able to take your teacher's or examiner's hand and walk them through your descriptive image? And AO6, and obviously, are you able to do that using things like alliteration, sibilance, similes, long and short sentences, interesting grammatical and structural features? But AO6 is just as important, right? Are you able to use good spag? Are you able to write accurately? Are you able to use good punctuation? And so on, okay? That is all included and tested in question five. Again, guys, as I said, if you have more questions, you kind of want to see a bit more. Maybe you're like, I don't understand what what specifically, how, how do I even read the mark scheme? How do I read these requirements and interpret them? Guys, I'm going to be going over that in more detail in my private masterclass on Sunday in connection to this locked paper. And obviously, if you have questions, I even put together like um, a framework, right? Explaining, here's language techniques, memorize them. These techniques are going to come up in any language paper one and paper two. Here's structure, memorize them. This is what AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4 and AO5 means. And obviously, as I said, I literally go over the mark scheme afterwards so that students can understand what examiners were looking for and why students... In the 2024 exams, 40% of them failed, right? Because a lot of students literally are just in the dark. They go into these exams and they're like, okay, let me just write whatever, cross my fingers and just hope everything goes well, right? I don't think that's a great strategy. You kind of want to empower yourself. You want to give yourself that freedom to learn what teachers and examiners are looking for. So that when you actually go into your mock exam hall or in your final GCSEs, you literally know exactly what you're going to do, okay? And of course, also having examples and model answers that I write in these papers, which I share with all of my students, you also don't have to worry about generating ideas, okay? You're not like, oh, okay, if I have like an image like this, which is about beach setting, what can I write? If I have an image that's based in the desert, what can I write? You literally have those examples, which I share with all my students. Now, as I said, guys, for this question, it is worth 40 marks. And you need to make sure you fulfill AO5 and AO6. Okay, now I'm going to go over descriptive writing because I do know that it's incredibly popular with teachers, students, and I want to walk you guys through what I would like to recommend if you were to approach descriptive writing. You decide, you know what, I'm going to go for descriptive writing. How should I structure my essay and my descriptive writing for any image that comes up? And when it comes to this specific image, what's the best way to approach it? Okay, so this question five, obviously, guys, I'm going over question five right now. Um, this question five tells you to write a description as suggested by this picture. I'm going to go for this picture, okay? Because the descriptive writing question that usually comes up is the image-based one. So I'm going to go for this picture. And you're told, write a description as suggested by this picture. Now, when it comes to descriptive writing, and again, I'm going to go into more detail on Sunday. And for those of you that have questions, as I said, guys, on TikTok, I pop up when I have some time. I don't tend to check comments. The comment section tends to go crazy. But also, guys, I do literally have to go at around 6 p.m. So obviously, for those of you that kind of want a bit more, you want to maybe see an example or you even have questions for me. I literally address that during my private masterclasses. OK, so of course, if you have questions, just join in on that. It's literally in, um, in the bio. And of course, as I said, guys, I'm going to be answering the 2024 paper. OK, now 
When it comes to descriptive writing, this is how I suggest to my students, structure your descriptive writing for any picture, okay? Just any image you're given. This is the general approach. You want to be looking. So for me, I call it the concentric circles, yeah? Paragraph number one should be what is going on, on around the fringes of the image that you look at. Fringes means outer edges. The co most common mistake when it comes to descriptive writing that I see lots of students make and even teachers note the same issue is the following. You have a prompt. You've got a nice picture in front of you. Then you look at the picture that you've been asked to write a description. And then what do you do? You go straight for what's obvious. You write one massive paragraph. Oh, there's people here and there's a C and there's, you know, all of these people standing around. There's a bunch of people. I'm going to describe that. I'm going to describe the C. I'm going to describe the ocean. I'm just going to describe that because that's the most obvious thing. Then what happens is somebody who's describing firstly they've not even planned yeah they've just launched straight into it they haven't even got an exam technique or an approach to the language paper one exam right so they don't even plan they don't even think okay let me just kind of plan and take a few minutes to just plan right they just launch into it so they have one chunky paragraph talking about what's most obvious and I would say if I were looking at this image the most obvious thing that stands out to me is these bunch of people the ocean right that's literally the most obvious Students write one massive chunky page describing all of that in detail. And then once they're done with that, they're like, um, okay, what else do I have? They look at the clock. They still have about 30 minutes. And now they're spending the remaining 30 minutes just writing random descriptions. Oh, there's a blue sky. Oh, um, there's clouds. Oh, uh, there's, you know, this sand and it looks wet. Oh, and now they start losing AO5 marks because the content and the organization is poor. Remember, guys, to secure these 24 out of 40 marks, your descriptive writing essay needs to show some type of organization. It's literally highlighted here by AQA. OK, and by the way, this all applies to any exam syllabus. Yeah. So obviously, I know people do at Excel, OCR, whatever. The same skills are tested when it comes to AO5, which is very important. It's worth 24 out of 40. You need to have some kind of structure. Do not just jump into your descriptive image. Describe in lots of detail what's really obvious. Have like a really nice opening paragraph. Then you stop and you're looking at the clock and you're like, okay, I've got 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly write random things that now pop up to me. Okay, so now I'm just filling up pages. I'm just filling up, filling up, going on vibes, 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 vibes. Oh, blue sky, um, random person in white. Okay, so there's also a spy in the distance. Don't do that have a structure and how to have a structure of descriptive writing is avoid describing the most obvious central focus warm up and start your first paragraph by looking on the outer fringes of the image warm up a little bit okay and show some kind of organization how you do this is start your paragraph number one by describing what is going on around the setting and what is the weather like. What could that be like? Now, if I look on the outer fringes, I would specifically be drawn to this blue sky, this clouds here. Um, you know, I can see maybe in the outer edges, in the skyline, I can see like little mountains here. I will describe all of that. The sky, the clouds. It's not immediately obvious, but actually... You want to start looking for those things that are not immediately obvious and describing it in lots of different ways, okay? Remember, guys, by the way, this is also why I personally am not massive on descriptive writing, but I do know most students love doing descriptive writing for whatever reason. When it comes to descriptive writing, you are not taking anyone here on an adventure. You don't start on this beach and suddenly you're in outer space. That's story. You have to, therefore, be able to describe in five, ten 20 different ways, the same thing. The image is static, meaning when you are describing, you have got to describe exactly what is in front of you. The change can ever be so slight, but not massive. Okay. So you now need to work on those synonyms. You now need to work on thinking of different ways to describe the sky, the clouds, and also the mountains that you see in the distance. If you were to go for this image. Now, then the second paragraph, I'm starting to warm up, okay, in my descriptive writing. Second paragraph will then be, actually, before I still go for what's most obvious, okay, I'm going to hold off on that because the most obvious thing I will have the most to write about. Let me hold off on that. Let me build that up. I'm going to think about what's happening in the atmosphere 
And what is the mood like? And I would say because this seems to be like a really bright, sunny place, it seems quite balmy. So I will imagine that, you know, there's a lot of warmth, merriment, people are happy. And what I'm going to think about is maybe, you know, like even if I can't see the sun, maybe the sun is hiding its smiling faces behind the cloud. I'm going to maybe think about, you know, the gentle ocean that's lapping on the shore. I'm going to describe what's going on as I take one step in my concentric circle, okay? So then my third paragraph is where after I have developed the setting and weather, I've established the less obvious thing. Then I take it one step further in my second concentric circle. What's the atmosphere and mood like? How is it like to be there? And what this looks like for me when I see this image is maybe perhaps summertime or perhaps the last days of summer. Those blessed last days before a bank holiday in August, when summer feels like it's going to go on forever. And, it, you know, there's always just that feeling of vibrancy. Everyone's outside, right? Everyone's by the beach. That's why it's so busy, because people are trying to make the most of it, right? Now, in my third paragraph, that's where I'm going to go to town on the central focus. That's now where I'm going to describe in lots of detail exactly what I see. The bunch of people, the, the coloured clothing, you know, you've got this one kid who's got these um, azure shorts. You've got this man who's got his hands crossed over with black shorts. You know, the water is lapping. Also, the ground seems mottled, right? There's all these holes in the ground. I'm now going to go to town in paragraph number three with central focus. I don't start that at the beginning. I don't start my descriptive writing by literally running out of steam, describing, oh, um, here's the most obvious stuff. This, 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 and this happens, right? You then end up running out of steam. Then after you've done that, you have nowhere to go. You're now writing random sentences and then you start losing that AO5, okay? Because your content and organization is now wonky. Suddenly your teacher, and guys, remember that your teachers and examiners can tell when you're writing stuff just to write, just for vibes. You're looking at the clock. You're like, okay, I've got 20 minutes. I've literally run out of things to write about in the most obvious okay, let me just fill this up by writing random sentences. Okay, so now your AO5 suffers. And then worse still, if your spelling is all over the place, if you don't really have accurate ways of expressing yourself, then your AO6 starts suffering too, okay? Then after I've gone to town, this is obviously going to be my largest paragraph, right? But I've warmed up. I'm then going to think about what are the general feelings? I'm going to now start zooming in even further. I'm probably going to zoom in on some of these individuals, right? What are the feelings like? What's the general general uh, sentiment? And what I can see here, if I'm thinking about kind of summer, especially the last days of summer, everyone's trying to make the most of it. So there's a lot of joy. There's a lot of cheer. There's a lot of jubilance, screams, people giggling, adults like gossiping, pss, 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 all of that I'm now going to use. And of course, guys, it goes without saying, in every single paragraph, I am using lots of language techniques and structure techniques. I am taking the language and structure that I have observed in section A, question two and three by another author. I am now taking that and becoming a wordsmith myself, right? I'm now using that in my own original piece of writing, in this case, my own original piece of creative, sorry, descriptive writing, okay? That's paragraph number four. And then in my fifth and final paragraph, there's going to be potentially an ever so slight change. Guys, remember, if you're doing descriptive writing, you have decided to climb that mountain, you've decided actually... So, of course, my fifth concentric paragraph will be, is there a slight change in a very specific area? I would probably look at maybe these buildings, right? And perhaps kind of use perhaps um, the sun setting a little bit, maybe not setting even, maybe just casting a shadow. So maybe the bright rays casting a slight shadow, which perhaps foreshadow the last days of summer. OK, so maybe there's just that little tinge of sadness at the end. I might just hint at because this is description, descriptive writing. So I've got to keep this image static. I don't it doesn't suddenly turn dark. People then disappear off the beach. Nothing like that. OK, remember, guys, descriptive writing, you have got to use only what's in front of you. OK, so, guys, this is what I would suggest as a descriptive writing structure. Again, guys, on Sunday this week, OK, I'm going to be doing my final language paper one masterclass. With my students, I'm going to be going over the descriptive image that came up. This is what students who were sitting their exam in May sat. The image, I'm not going to lie, is a pretty tough one that came up in this paper. 
And what I'll be doing is applying this structure. And of course, all of my students are part of that. Not only can they ask me questions, they will also get their typed model responses, okay? And I'll show them how to apply this and also follow up with the model response for the story. To be honest, actually, guys, when I think about this 2024 paper, I actually do think if I were to rank in terms of difficulty, and I think maybe past papers, I think this is maybe a strong number two, strong number two in terms of hardest, okay? I still feel the exam where you had the zoo image was probably the most tough um, paper. Or maybe not, maybe the kitchen one, okay? But this one is up there, like second hardest or third hardest for the creative writing. Because even when I was looking at the story, I was thinking, oh, that was a tough story, okay? Both the image and the story were just kind of atrocious, I'm not going to lie. So I'd say it's kind of like number two if I were to rank in terms of most difficult question fives in past papers, right? Anyway, so guys, getting into this, how do I apply this? Starting off with my setting and weather, as I said, guys, I'm going to begin by describing this in detail, okay? What's going on here? And I'm going to describe the sky, this balmy, beautiful sky, this azure sky. And also there are all these clouds, these wispy clouds traveling across them. There's these mountain ranges in the distance. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to start and warm up by describing what's not so immediately obvious. Remember, guys, do not run out of steam when it comes to your descriptive writing. Do not start off by describing the most obvious thing, go to town on that, and then run out of steam after you've done that one chunky paragraph, and then you're now writing random sentences, okay? So I'm going to start off by describing this in more detail. So I'm going to begin by stating how there were. And guys, by the way, I think in terms of either description or stories, your first sentence should always be pathetic fallacy related, okay? Pathetic fallacy is when the weather describes or reflects the mood. So I'm going to talk about the clouds, right? So clusters of pearly white clouds. Of course, guys, as I'm developing this, as I said, guys, I'm going to be mixing up my sentences, going to be having sibilance, alliteration, metaphors, all of that stuff comes into play, okay? Language and structure also needs to be applied in your own original piece of writing. So the clouds drifted across the sky, or even I'm going to say that it's the azure sky because it's blue, right? Um, and maybe they were leisurely, leisurely drifting. As I said, guys, I'm obviously handwriting this, but I do know that my handwriting is not always the easiest for people to read. Obviously, if you joined in on my masterclasses, all of them tend to be typed out. OK, so um, in this final masterclass I'm doing on Sunday, I'm going to obviously be typing up the um, question five response for this 2024 locked exam. OK, anyway, but in this case, obviously, guys, I am literally handwriting. OK, so leisurely drifting uh, across the expansive sky, the clouds looked like, and here I'm going to use a simile, pieces of cotton candy in the turquoise sky. Guys, as I said, this is what makes descriptive writing quite challenging. You're describing the same thing in many different ways, meaning you need to have lots of ambitious language and vocabulary. I have described the clouds as fluffy uh, cotton balls. I've described this color blue as azure, which means blue as turquoise. You need to have that word bank. Again, guys, I go over all of this on Sunday. I even prepare word banks for my students, right? So they don't have to do all of that heavy lifting. And then they can literally just be free to actually practice past papers because that's what you should be doing, especially if you're in year 11, okay? So what else can I talk about? How can I describe this, okay? So I'm going to personify the sky as smiling down, okay? So the sky smiled, personification, down on the busy, bustling, Alliteration of plosive B sounds, beach as tourists and locals, frolicked, which means played on um, in the ocean even. 
So here I'm creating a really nice mood, okay, with my setting and weather paragraph. Again, I'm using pathetic fallacy, heavy pathetic fallacy to set that mood. Then I'm going to say, now I'm going to talk about the mountains. Um, Low-lying mountains surrounded the town. Because I'm assuming, to be honest, when I look at this, I just think of somewhere like Brighton, yeah? I usually just feel like somewhere like Brighton is like this. Or one of those little tiny, you know, Cornwall. One of those tiny little towns, obviously said by a very arrogant Londoner, right? So this looks more like a town rather than kind of city vibes, okay? So I'm going to say that, you know, it's surrounded these mountains, okay? I'm talking about these mountains in the distance. These mountains in the horizon, okay? So they surround the town like a citadel. I'm using ambitious language and vocabulary in my writing. That's what you need to do in question five. Remember, guys, this is an English exam. You need to show off that ambitious language and vocabulary, okay? And I'm going to personify the mountain standing shoulder to shoulder. This is actually a really good um, use of personification if you use any mountain settings, both in descriptive writing, by the way, guys, and creative writing, okay? So you decide to do your story based in a mountainous area. You talk about the mountains rising up in the sky and standing shoulder to shoulder, maybe like soldiers, yeah? But they could stand sh sh uh, shoulder to shoulder like friends, okay? So this is like soldiers um, ready to attack any intruder intruder um and here the mountains seemed that they were kind of greenish so i'm going to talk about the uh, juniper grass dark green grass carpeted the mountains so I'm saying that there was grass all down the side. So then I'm going to say summers, balmy, pleasantly warm, balmy rays floated down from the endless sky and onto the town's inhabitants again i am easing myself into this descriptive writing as i said guys a very common error that students make with descriptive writing they describe the most obvious thing in the image describe it for maybe one page a page and a half and then run out of steam then they're now struggling looking at random things around the image to now start describing don't do that Warm yourself up. Start off your first paragraph by setting, uh, describing the setting and the weather. And that's exactly what I've done in this opening paragraph. Now I'm going to move on to describe the general atmosphere and mood. So I've started off with going, uh, describing what's going on in the periphery, the edges of the image. Now I'm going to take one step closer and think about what is happening in the mood. I'm zooming in further, okay? Obviously, you guys remember that when you start zooming in, that's you structurally um, incorporating features that are engaging for your reader in your descriptive writing. Again, guys, if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, I have questions. I'd like to see a little bit more. Can I have a copy of this? Guys, I'm going to be going over this in detail and answering the descriptive image that came up in the May 2024 exam on Sunday from 5 p.m. Okay. And obviously you can ask me all the questions you want. I remember last week's Sunday masterclass when I went over uh, section A was that chat was popping. We stayed like an extra half an hour because there were so many questions. However, of course, guys, as I said, um, TikTok live, I'm, I'm not going to lie, guys. I obviously want to finish this, um, but I'm probably not going to be able to answer that many questions. Okay. But now this is how you describe the atmosphere and mood. As I said, guys, if I look at this image, it seems really warm. You know, the ocean seems gentle. Everyone's really happy, right? So I'm going to describe that. And I'm going to say that maybe the sun was hidden behind one of these clouds, right? But it's still smiling down on people, right? So everything is really nice, okay? So I'm describing a really positive setting. Hidden behind uh, clouds. And here I would say wispy clouds, comma, the shy sun. So I'm saying that the sun is shy because I can't see it in the picture, in the image, hid. It's gleaming face 
I am personifying objects. By the way, guys, your personification should be heavy in descriptive writing, especially if you have lots of different images, okay? You still need to bring what you've got and what you have to work with to life, okay? Of course, you've got people in this image, but also you still want to personify kind of some of these static objects, okay? Bring the picture to life. Make it engaging for your teacher, for your reader, okay? So um, maybe it hid its gleaming face, yet it's warm rays beamed outwards out words um air thick with the salty scent of the sea here i am using olfactory image okay what you can smell salty scent of the sea right wafted across the beach mm, the um balmy heat so this is pleasantly warm drifted um or um Maybe perhaps it entered the sand, right? So it made the sand quite warm. So penetrated the sand. Beneath, um, underneath or underneath the bare feet of the people who stood on the shore looking out distractedly so i'm describing what's going on and there may be gentle ocean waves languidly lazily right the ocean here is lazy it's kind okay so i'm talking about what's going on in the outer edges but i'm giving you know i'm setting an atmosphere a really nice warm atmosphere okay a gentle atmosphere by describing and making these objects um I'm, I'm making these inanimate objects i'm giving them personalities okay so the ocean is languid it's soft okay it's not like crashing and you know like threatening people that it's gonna uh, drown them and stuff like that right so gentle ocean waves languidly lapped on the shore so here i'm creating like a really nice pleasant image of summer right um bringing uh so maybe on the shore bringing actually i'm going to use this bottom line um soft foams of waves of waves that crashed against the golden sand the golden wet sand so i'm describing this in detail and then maybe i can say the light waves because there's kids in the water light waves delicately patted um, the backs of children, the backs of children who sat still in the warm <clears throat> ocean water, letting the sea um lap on um so actually i'm gonna shorten that full stop because i feel like that sentence is getting a little bit too long okay um water or maybe um splash dot 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 water rippled onto the shore I need to have my one word or my two word sentences as well, okay? So it's good, guys, to have long sentences in your descriptive writing, but also make sure you have short one word sentences or two word sentences. Make it a nice mix and a balance of long and short sentences. You can have, obviously, majority long sentences, but you still need to add a range of structural and grammatical features. That is you answering and demonstrating your AO5 skills, okay? So remember that AO5 
um, examiners and teachers are seeking that you have used a range of grammatical and structural features, okay? So, um, water rippled onto the shore um, and maybe perhaps I'm going to say that, so this is now my final um, line for this paragraph before now going to the central focus, the most obvious, right? So, perhaps I'm going to say um, it slid across the flaxen sand the golden sand so i have started off with my setting and weather paragraph for descriptive writing that's paragraph number one then now i have finished my atmosphere and mood paragraph that's paragraph number two so now I'm going to go into the most obvious part of the image. I've warmed myself up. I have not, um, you know, described the most obvious thing for ages in one just opening paragraph. Then I've run out of things to talk about. I have tried to build up. OK, and also what am I doing in doing so? I'm also giving myself a chance to comment and talk about all the other less obvious stuff, okay? Guys, remember that. This is one of the elements you need to make sure you incorporate into your descriptive writing mocks and ultimately, obviously, your exam so you don't find yourself in the position of the 40% in the 2024 summer exams that failed and had to resit their English paper one and paper two exams this week, okay? So now I'm going to go to town. I'm now going to go for the most obvious thing. All these bunch of people there in the shore. There's also um, a mix of old and young people, right? I've, I can see this little kid. I can see another kid in what seems to be a purple um, uh, no swimsuit. I can see this lady in her um, scarlet top. I can see this other lady in her white top. I can see, um, you know, this man who's standing here. I can see another man with his son who's got a hat. Um, a black hat. He's got like a lime colored shirt. I'm going to describe all of that. And now I'm going to go to town with the most obvious thing I have built up. That's paragraph number three, right? I've zoomed in. And also that's why I've got these circles, right? So I started off by talking about in my outer circle, what's going on in the setting. Then I zoomed in atmosphere and mood. Now I'm going into central focus. Again, guys, if you're like, oh, what the hell is this? Maybe you've joined the live and you're like, I don't understand what's going on in these circle business. Guys, I'll obviously go over this in more detail in my um, Sunday 5 p.m. masterclass. Okay. And obviously I'm going to show you guys how to apply this concentric circle approach to the image that came up in this paper which is a locked exam very likely going to come up in your mocks and also guys to be honest I think especially if descriptive writing is literally your go-to literally the model answer I write is going to be part of your story bank or your descriptive writing bank for any hot or desert setting because that's obviously hint hint the image that came up in the 2024 exam now going into the central focus paragraph, okay? So going to describe all of this in lots of detail, right? So now here, I'm going to talk about how those hordes and hordes of people, they're swarming this entire ocean, right? There's so many of them. It's like the last days of summer. Everyone knows that the summer holidays are about to be done. Um, and literally everyone is at the beach, right? So everyone, the mom, the dad, the kid, everyone's at the beach. So I'm going to describe these hordes of people, right? So I'm going to say bodies swarmed the ocean i'm using anthropomorphic imagery yeah anthropomorphic is when you turn a person or describe a person in animal terms we usually think about personification as the other way around right personification is when you describe an object in human terms but here i'm talking about how there's many people that swarms of them i'm using anthropomorphism again this is a grade nine technique and maybe what i could add is and um, perhaps there were endless bodies two word sentence okay body swarmed the ocean endless bodies right so there's so many people they ran they jumped they walked walked across the shore the sea and by the buildings that lined the edges of the ocean and here of course when i say they ran they jumped they walked that's triplet structural feature i'm mixing it up okay again guys remember that you need to make your writing and spelling accurate for your ao6 marks but ao5 is 
You need to also show a range of um, structural, grammatical features. You need to also include your ambitious language and ambitious vocabulary. That's why, as I said, guys, use stuff like personification, but also the opposite of that, which is anthropomorphism. Bodies swarming the ocean. You're using animal imagery to describe people, okay? Now, what else can I talk about, okay? So I'm going to talk about what's happening like where these people are standing, right? As I said, there's all these like holes in the ground. The, the, the flat sand is mottled. There's like a bunch of holes. So I'm going to describe that in lots of detail, right? So um, the sandy shore on which the tourists and visitors walked was mottled right there's loads of holes you can say it's mottled so for example someone who's got acne on their face you can say that their face is mottled with spots with um you know different things that make their skin bumpy right so that's a really good uh, adjective to describe anything right it was mottled with several holes um and maybe um dug up by their feet as they um, sauntered along the wet ground. So that's a really long sentence, right? So of course, um, I'm using a mix of long sentences and short sentences, okay? So this is obviously a really long complex sentence okay again guys if any of you are joining in guys i am doing a descriptive writing live but of course guys for those of you that want more maybe also to access pre-recorded lessons right and also live lesson recordings which um, are part of my master classes you can join in that class on sunday from 5 p.m you can ask me any question relating to the descriptive image which i'm going to be writing a model answer for at 5 p.m okay obviously today in this tiktok live i cannot answer the um locked papers but i am showing you guys how to write a descriptive answer based on this image and i still am on the central focus that's the um you know the most obvious thing in the image okay so carrying on what else is happening right um you know perhaps now i'm going to talk about the children right so there's one kid here he's got this navy short uh, pair of shorts there's another one here who's also got like navy shorts um and they all seem to be like digging energetically into the ground right like maybe trying to make like sand castles um you know and especially with this kid you've got the mum standing close by here right monitoring him and looking for any dangers so i'm going to describe all of those uh, like all of that activity right um so maybe I'm going to say, and now I'm going to zoom in on the children and their parents, right? And now really zoom in. When you zoom in, you're adding structural features in your writing. So I'm going to say that the child was donning, wearing a pair of navy shorts, a young boy, energetically, dug and dug he made holes he made several holes he dug several holes he dug um holes um across the shore and he acted as if simile he were on an urgent secret mission okay this is describing kids who play you know and they look like they're, they're really concentrated and i'm going to talk about his mother the woman next to this kid who's wearing like kind of like a floral outfit um like a floral skirt and a pink top right so his mother i'm going to assume that it's his mom right his mother um in a coral top so this is pink and a flowery skirt. Um, stood close <clears throat> by. <clears throat> Her golden hair 
So I'm saying that she's blonde because that is the woman in the image. She's got kind of blonde hair. I think I've over annotated it. So maybe it might not be clear. So her golden hair um, maybe flapped in the breeze. So maybe there's a really nice gentle breeze in the breeze. As she kept an eye on her son. Yet another man in a lime t-shirt so now here i'm talking about the guy that i noticed in the image who's wearing like this lime t-shirt and he seems to be maybe with this kid who's got a black hat blue top and black shorts right so yet another man in a lime t-shirt um walked steadily into the ocean flanked on one side so who's on his side it's his son maybe i'm gonna assume it's his son okay so flanked on one side with his son um they strode or the stridently walked into the languid the lazy sea um his son so um his young son obediently walked or um sauntered next to him his so he's got a black hat so i'm going to say it's obsidian hat pulled over his face pulled low over his face and is and here i'm going to also talk about the little girl who i'd mentioned before who has like this lavender um swimsuit right so maybe she's running around screaming so also what can my um the people on this in this place here right so um a young girl in a lavender swimsuit so swim suit Mm, screamed as she gleefully uh, sprinted across the sea. She giggled as she tried to swerve the ocean's waves which lapped at her feet lapped at her feet obviously guys now i'm gonna move on into so now i've talked about and picked out specific things from this image right so now i've described in lots of detail the um people who are in this ocean i've zoomed in on really particular individuals because obviously there's so many people i can't talk about all of them but i have obviously um began by referring to all of them by talking about them as swarms of people right to emphasize just how many people there are as i said guys this is anthropomorphism i'm using animalistic language to describe these people okay often you see a lot of personification human uh, language used to describe objects but also a good way of bringing your writing to life is using anthropomorphism, animalistic language to describe people. Actually, a really good example of anthropomorphism for those of you that are studying Jekyll and Hyde is the way Hyde is described, right? Ape-like figure. Um, he's described using a lot of anthropomorphism, okay? Anyway, now I'm going to go into my fourth paragraph before my final paragraph. Again, guys, for those of you that are like, oh, I'd love to have maybe a structure of this. And also for those of you that might be struggling to read my handwriting, because I know my handwriting is kind of like sometimes a little bit chicken scratchish. All my masterclasses, I always type up and my responses because I know that not everybody learns in the same way. Not everybody also finds it easy to understand my handwriting, right? So I type up all my masterclasses. I'm going to be having my final masterclass this Sunday at 5 p.m., um, and this is going to be a live lesson where my students can engage with me. I'll write model answers for um, all five questions. We've actually done questions one to four, right? So we're done with section A. And this Sunday, we're going to be going over the descriptive image that came up in this paper, right? So obviously, students get typed up model responses that they can now use for any desert 
or hot setting because that's hint hint um what the image was related to in the 2024 paper now as i said i'm not going to zoom in even further what was the sentiments like what are the feelings like right zooming in and of course as i said in my plan there's a lot of exuberance, there's a lot of joy, everyone's really happy, even if it's the last days of summer, everyone's making the most of it. Now I'm going to describe that, right? So, screams of, and here obviously I'm using onomatopoeia, lots of onomatopoeia. Guys, remember in descriptive writing, you need to use all five senses, okay? Um, touch, taste, sight, smell, and uh, I'm forgetting the other one, touch, taste, sight, smell, and hearing, obviously, okay? Um, so, what can I hear? Obviously, throughout my descriptive writing, I'm consistently making sure I have like a mix of long and short sentences, um, alliteration, sibilance, all of that stuff comes to play, okay? So, screams of jubilation. Guys, big words, ambitious language. You need to use ambitious language and vocabulary. Exuberance. If you don't understand the meaning of these words, you need to look them up in Google. Just Google it and then use it in your writing, okay? And chair filled the air. So I'm saying there was so much jubilation, there was so much exuberance, there was so much chair. I'm listing, I'm using rule of three as well, okay? The cries of children mixed with the chatty murmurs of gossiping adults, right? So this is obviously what usually happens when you've got a place with lots of kids and lots of adults. You've got screaming kids and murmuring gossipy adults, right? Um, hordes of people mixed and mingled, mixed and mingled alliteration at the beach as they soaked in the last days of summer so now i'm starting to maybe add kind of like a nice feeling but also it's tinged with some kind of ending it's tinged with that kind of edge of unpleasantness right so that's kind of obviously that conflicting feeling we tend to all feel during the summer holidays oh my god i'm loving this oh my gosh it's gonna end oh my gosh i love this it's gonna end right so i'm now mixing that in and maybe i'm gonna describe this the wind the breeze of wind whoosh dot 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 adding some ellipsis my ambitious um punctuation as well as my onomatopoeia a gentle breeze carried snippets of conversation from one person to the next raucous loud laughter filled the afternoon air again the general feelings of my feelings paragraph is everyone's really happy but it's the afternoon it's the last days of summer so it's always tinged with some kind of ending an impending ending right so maybe they many, many young boys and girls shivered with eagerness shivered with eagerness as they plunged themselves into the gentle ocean. And that's my feelings paragraph done. I've zoomed in. What are the sentiments? How does it feel like to be in this place? We can hear lots of noise. We can hear lots of laughter, but also the sun is maybe um, getting a little bit weaker. It's the end of summer. That's why there's so many people. There's hordes and swarms of people, right? So I'm done with my feelings paragraph. Now I'm going to go into my ever so slight change. By the way, guys, remember that descriptive writing, you do not turn this into darkness. It doesn't suddenly change and then these people run off because there's like a dinosaur chasing them. Don't do that. It's not a story. It's descriptive writing. You need to work with what's in front of you. And as I said, guys, 
in my slight, in my ever so slight change, I'm going to show maybe there's like a shadow that's being cast as, you know, things get a little bit darker, but it's not getting darkness. It's still afternoon. And I'm going to use these buildings. So some of these buildings look like they have like a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to describe these buildings to kind of hint at this ever so slight change because it's the end of summer, right? So now going into my fifth and final paragraph before wrapping up, guys. Um, and as I said, this is probably going to be my final TikTok live, um, especially for language paper one. Um, of 2024 okay so the next time i'm probably going to be live looking at language paper one is um probably at some stage in 2025 i don't know um but what's definitely for certain is on sunday i'm going to be doing my language paper one master class okay so this is going to be a group class private and i'm going to be writing a model response for question number five the descriptive writing and then afterwards I'll also be sending the model answer for the story, okay, that my students can use. So, of course, guys, for those of you that want a little bit more, that have some questions, maybe you also want perhaps like cheat sheets, right? You want like a my framework, which goes over, here's language techniques, here's structure techniques for section A, here's a range of ambitious words. I always send my students a word a week. So all of that also is part of this masterclass. All my students get that in addition to uh, typed answers, because I do know that my handwriting is not e the easiest for people to read okay so now i'm going to finish off my final paragraph describing this row of buildings there's a shadow that's going to be cast on them and it's still going to be really nice because i can't change the image too much but i need to make sure and i need to ensure that oops i'm being asked by tiktok to verify myself hopefully i can be verified here we go um but i can't make my descriptive image too um sudden okay the change cannot be too sudden you can do lots of changes in stories you have that flexibility you can't in descriptive writing so final paragraph a row of buildings so now here i'm talking about the buildings on the outer edges okay so this is the buildings that are circling all along here right so i'm going to talk about the row of buildings um circled the outer edges of the beach they peered so i'm personifying these buildings okay so i'm using personification across at the frolicking people are playing around frolicking beachgoers broodingly so these buildings may be a little bit moody broodingly so these buildings looking out a little bit moodingly as or maybe here i'm going to add as the afternoon shade cast a um right so i'm not sure why tiktok keeps on asking me to verify but anyway hopefully i'm still on guys okay um had to verify again but anyway Finishing off the final paragraph. Not long to go and then um, jumping right off, okay? So um, I'm talking about these buildings. I'm personifying them and the pairing across, right? So, um, so as the afternoon shade cast a light shadow across them. So as I said, guys, I'm now talking about these buildings on the outer edges, right? Because I haven't talked about them. And by the way, guys, what have I done in this image and in this descriptive writing? I have used all the components, okay? And by using all of those components, what am I doing? I'm obviously answering the question and getting myself closer and closer to full marks on this question. But equally... I'm not running out of steam because I have planned my response. I said at the start of this live, guys, you need to make sure you spend around 10 minutes planning. And what that means is because I have not only focused on the most obvious thing, I have tried to address every single image in a way that is easy for my teacher, for my examiner to follow. And now not only am I going to secure those AO5 marks, but also I'm if as long as I spell correctly and I use punctuation accurately, I'm also accessing those AO6 marks. Now, what else happens, right? Um, maybe I'm going to talk about some of these terrace buildings, right? These Victorian buildings, right? And there's this kind of massive white house, which seems like a hotel, right? So I'm going to describe that, okay? Um, next to the terraced houses stood a large, um, maybe, um, imperial hotel. It looks like a really fancy hotel which p 
appeared at the people alliteration it gazed kindly on the sea willing the summer to continue so i'm saying the beach uh, uh, uh near the beach there's this white building and this white building which is right here, this imperial looking building. It's kind of like begging the summer to just continue. It's willing these, um, the sun and the warmth to continue. Whilst this kind of slightly darker buildings, a little bit more broody, a little bit more negative. So there's this kind of conflict and contrast, right? Um, yet all the buildings waited for the inevitable, unavoidable, what is inevitable if we know that this is the last days of summer? Summer would end. That's maybe why a bunch of people are there. Autumn was on its way in. Mm, the rows of houses, rows of houses stood as a shadow traveling traveled across them whilst the sun's rays stood to one side of these buildings a light shadow cast a pull on them to their other side as the last days of summer unfolded so i keep on hinting that this happiness is now about to end and speaking of ending guys as i said wrapping up today's live just quickly recapping, guys, on the following. I know descriptive writing is really popular. For my masterclass this Sunday at 5 p.m., I'd actually sent a vote out to my students saying, hey, for language paper one, what do you want me to cover for question number five? I'm going to be doing my final masterclass of 2024 for paper one on Sunday and then following that up for the, in the following Sunday with paper two. These are the two locked papers. Now, when I asked my students, hey, for this final class before we take a break for Christmas and then resume in January, what do you guys want me to go over? The story or descriptive writing? And the overwhelming majority of my students voted for description. And that really sh showed me that a lot of students still prefer descriptive writing. I also know that a lot of teachers prefer to teach that, okay? And that's why I thought to just pop up today and go over another descriptive writing question and just quickly talking about how to generally approach it. Guys, as I said, um, in these exams, okay, this is a 2024 exams, 40% of GCSE students failed their exams. And one of the things that came up in the examiner's report for section A was students didn't actually know how to accurately label subject terminology, language and structure. And I went over that in the last two Sundays with my GCSE uh, masterclass students. However, another thing that emerged from the examiner's report is when it came to either the story or description, especially for AO5 marks, the content and organization was all over the place. And what's one common error that students who pick descriptive writing do, which leads them to lose AO5 and AO6 marks, especially AO5, is they focus on the most obvious thing in the image, use the first par uh, paragraph, describing it in lots of detail, okay? So they start in lots of detail talking about the most obvious thing. Say, for example, in this case, it's the people, it's the beach, right? They have a great, amazing opening paragraph and then when they're done because they haven't planned the response have just jumped in and described the most obvious thing they run out of steam they don't know what else to say and then now they look at the clock um in the exam hall and they're like okay i've got 20 minutes let me just write, write random sentences describing everything i can see do not do that have a strategy have a plan but also guys as i said if you're still unsure right if for example you're looking at this and you're like i'd really like a little bit more guidance i have some questions guys i let you go over and address questions for my students during my sunday 5 p.m masterclass. okay as i said literally on sunday just a sunday gone we literally overran by 30 minutes because i had so many students asking questions okay so so of course, guys, obviously, if you want questions, also, if you want like typed up model responses, okay, because as I said, guys, my handwriting is not always the easiest to read uh, by people. 
I always top up all my model answers, okay? And I also send like additional model responses, okay? So for example, this paper, in the class, I'm going to be going over the image for descriptive writing because that's what students want to do. However, I will also answer the creative writing story and send that over to my students afterwards using the story mountain structure so that they can have story banks to use and revise and also memorize during the Christmas break, okay? Because remember guys, after Christmas, January comes around next year, it's five months and then your GCSEs kick off in May, okay? This is class of 2025. So make sure you guys stay on top of it. Do not also squander your holidays, especially year 11s. If you're in year 10, I do know some of your 10s clock into these lives. You've got a bit more breathing room, a bit more time. If you're in year 11, make sure you also make the most of your um, holidays, okay? Because they're going to become few and far between. Everything's going to start piling on if it's not already. And suddenly you're going to wake up one day and your teacher's like, okay guys, final Easter mocks. And then you blink again and suddenly you're in an exam hall in May and you're crossing your fingers. Oh my God, I really hope, I really hope I'll quicken this exam. That's the worst strategy guys, okay? Plan, prepare, and also look at examples. Again, guys, with my master classes, I literally always write grade nine model answers. And then I tell my students, go off, download all these answers and memorize them, read them and apply it to your own practice, okay? Anyway, guys, so uh, I'm going to jet. As I said, guys, this is uh, going to be my last live generally of um, language, paper one. Potentially, I might pop up, maybe, I don't know, don't know, don't know. I'm not going to lie. I do think that this is probably going to be my last live on TikTok. But obviously, for those of you that want to go over this paper, the locked paper, and of course, also the Sunday afterwards, I'm going to be going over um, paper two. So this is the uh, nonfiction paper. Again, these are private lessons because these papers are locked, okay? So for those of you that are interested and keen on that, obviously sign up. The link is in the bio. So guys, uh, thank you so much for joining in on Friday. Okay. You could be anywhere else, but you chose to be in this live on Friday, Friday. So guys, I hope you have a great evening. And of course, for those of you that are part of my masterclasses or have signed up for my masterclass, I shall be speaking to you guys this Sunday at 5 p.m. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for joining in. I hope you guys took screenshots because, um, this is probably going to be finished off and um yeah guys uh take care guys and uh speak soon to those of you who are going to be joining in on sunday Bye.